Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video what I'm going to be doing is I will be upgrading this G3 Snow iMac which has spinning rust inside of it into an M SATA. And this one over here, if you recognize it, this was my last video's uh, iMac. So what I did with this one right here, so the one on the left, is I threw in an adapter that lets you run an SD card inside as a hard drive. Now I got some comments from some people saying, you know, running those kind of adapters are not necessarily the greatest because the SD cards can corrupt pretty easily. So I'm going to be doing the full proper upgrade on this one right here in today's video. <laughs> First things first, I laid this down on a blanket that I had, so I'm not going to scratch the screen. So there are screws right over here, just some Phillips head screws, that that is the first thing that we have to take out in order to get this shell off. The screws are out. Now the next step is, you're probably going to think that, oh, we should take this off and there's something hidden under here. No, you do not need to touch this. What you do need to do is take this piece of plastic off, which covers a little uh, VGA out. Put it to the side and you have yet another two screws, another two Phillips heads. So we're going to take that one and that one out and then we're going to continue. Screws have been taken out. Now this whole section of plastic actually can come off. You just got to be very gentle about it. So three, two, one. And hope for the best that you don't destroy anything. So as you can see, it comes off quite easily. I am holding the camera with one hand. And we just got to make sure that you slide it out without breaking anything. So as I said, this does not need to be worried about. It's still in there. Now we have the fun of taking off this whole shield right over here so we can access the internals. Uh, in here, I believe, and you can kind of see it here, the, uh, the wiring, the hard drive should be in there. So gonna take this off so we can get access to that. I should also mention the screws are slightly recessed in here uh, as you're looking at my hand. So yeah, so they're all the way around. This one there. We just really got to make sure that you take all of the screws out. And then there are also a couple, oh, sorry, right over here and over here. And then this fantastic shield that they designed uh, will need to be pulled out. I began lifting this gently. As you can see, you just got to be careful not to break anything. Fantastic design. So thrilled that they put this in there. So here are the insides of my iMac. And what I'm going to be doing is we will have to take this whole thing out so I can access uh, the drive right over here. Now to do that, let's just take a look. I believe we might be able to just take out these two screws here and I should be able to slide, oh, sorry, these four, one, two, three, four, and I should be able to just slide the drive back. Now, this is the airport card upgrade and then there's some RAM over here. I could just easily just take that out. So just unplug this, being gentle not to tear anything. There we go. And I should be able to just get the drive out. So like I said, uh, just the four screws here and slide it back and That's pretty much it. So I took out the screws took out this old hard drive now This one did not come with it as you can see it is an 80 gig uh, 7200 uh, it is getting older though, so it has to be removed This is the Wi-Fi uh, Board adapter board with the airport card in it next what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be taking an M SATA and putting it onto a technically a couple of adapters so we could fit it back into this machine. Here's everything we should need. So first of all, this is an adapter board that I honestly just bought on Amazon because I did the rest of these things that I've had general good success with. It cost me about, I think at the time, like five or $6 Canadian. Uh, inside is a little spot that you could just screw in an M SATA which I will pop this off. There we go, and then a little baggie there. So as you can see, there's a little spot that you could put the drive in. Um, there are little places for screws to hold the drive down. 
and it comes with a baggie of screws to close it up. Next is just this Dogfish Technology M Zeta. I didn't get anything too big because honestly, I don't need anything too big for an iMac G3. This is a 64 a gigabyte one. Now, I don't know long-term reliability, but I haven't had any issues running these in my computers. So 64 gigabytes is plenty for G3. Next, I'm gonna have to convert this because this is for a laptop. This is desktop IDE. So this will just plug in to there. Let me get it in. I'm not gonna put it in all the way because I have to take it apart again. And then it has power here and then the IDE connection from the iMac. And we should be golden. So I'm gonna be installing this right now. I'm not gonna show you me screwing it in. We've all seen people put in drives just like that. Put in two screws here. Pardon me, put the cover on. There's places for screws to hold it together. Connecting this bad boy over here and then I'll head back to the iMac and install it. Here's a drive right here. I did not get adapter to fit into the bay. I didn't think I'd really, really need it super badly. Essentially all it's gonna go is, if I can get it in there, we're gonna put it in. I should have at least one screw to hold it in and that probably will be plenty. Worst case scenario, I'm sure I could just add in some double-sided tape. Uh, some of you might be screaming about that, but you know what? For me, it's perfectly fine. It'll hold it in place and I don't see this going anywhere. I will reconnect this. I will also reconnect the power. And then honestly, all you gotta do is just put everything back together in the order you took it out. So I'm not gonna be showing that. So the next clip, we're gonna see if I can get the OS installed on this. The iMac has been put back together. I plugged it in with our very special original rainbow Apple cable. We're gonna hope for the best. Uh, one more thing, in case some of you were triggered by this, this is a very new battery that I had in here before when I was using it uh, just to test out some stuff, play some games. I took it out in case some of you are gonna be in the comments, take out the batteries. So, battery's pretty new. Here we go. Plugged in, three, two, one. If all goes well, should see the screen light up and a little question mark folder. Because there is definitely no S, OS, I should say, on this right now. Now, excuse this, that's just a refresh rate. So there we go. So it turns on, so next step is, I'm gonna give it my best shot to see if I can install OS 9 on this, just like I did my last one. My very official OS 9 disc is out. We're gonna hope for the best because slot loaders have a problem where these don't always eject or take in discs very well. So let's hope that it will at least manage to do this. And press C. It's spinning up at least. But again, sorry for the refresh rate. That's what happens with the phone camera. I hear spinning up. And happy Mac. And well, I did have a cursor. I will need a mouse pad, a very official one. Because you can't do an OS install without an official mouse pad. So here we go. So it's OS 9.2.2. And we're going to see will that drive show up? I'm 50 50 on this working because sometimes they're not really registered. It iMacs can be very fussy. I think I got very lucky with the last drive, the uh, SD card drive in my other iMac. I'm hoping for the best with this iMac. It should be done booting up about now. I'm just going to zoom in a little. Excuse that. And again, sorry for this. If you don't like this, zoom ahead in the video, unfortunately. <laughs> so there's the OS 9 lives disk so it is completely red I do not see a drive however but it should pop this open in just one second okay so I'm just gonna turn you this way 
get rid of this network time error because I take out the battery. And you should see right there, there's ATA not initialized. So if I click it, initialize, and we're going to initialize the drive. And there we go. So I can go quick drive setup. And then it is right over here on the side. So it is red. You can open our OS9 lives disk. Zoom out. Which is taking a second, which does worry me. Move this. Hmm. And I don't hear anything. What I'm going to be doing, as this is scaring me, is I'm going to reboot this machine. We're going to try to boot right back in the installer and see if I can get it working. Luckily, I rebooted and everything works again. I'm not entirely sure what happened. I think it's because the optical drive is not in the greatest of shape. So we're just going to click Apple Software Restore. Um, so all it does is it takes the image from the disk. It can erase the destination, so the, uh, the drive we're using. And it just restores the image to the drive. So I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. Yes, proceed, erase. But once it's done, I'll turn the camera back on. We'll reboot and cross our fingers, it will work. And we're done. So it says it was successfully restored. And we're going to see if we can restart this old beast here. So I'm going to click restart. I'm going to try to eject that disk. But again, the drive is not very good, so I might barely be able to push it out. I'm holding eject on the keyboard. Can it eject? Oh, barely got it out. So I might need to reboot this because it probably was trying to run it from the CD. Oh, let's just shut this off. Try that again. Now, it should be completely silent right now. There's no spinning rust inside. Will it find the OS? I got a happy Mac. And we are in OS 9.2. I did not do this upgrade, by the way, for speed reasons. I did it because I want to get rid of all the noise of the old drives. Plus, these are not very reliable anymore. They will die. They're 20 years old. And now it's probably going to try to boot into some video, which I'm hopefully not going to allow it to. And it says it's 12.14 a.m. And I can guarantee you it's not. No. Give it a second. Let's try to load in the background. If I command quit out of this. Come on, you. And this is why I did not bother with OS X on this machine. In my opinion, iMac G3s do not play well with anything more intensive than 9.22. There we go. Got out of that. So, skipped the video. And we'll go to System Profiler. I'm going to zoom you in a little here. So, as you can probably see, or I'm hopeful, anyways, it says it's 500 megahertz uh, G3. Uh, one gig of RAM, so I have two 512 sticks. Devices and volumes. Here's our CDRW. Here's our hard drive. Hard drive is showing as product ID SSD 64 gigabytes with Mac OS 9 libs. So. 59.62 capacity, 59.17 available. Plenty of room for a machine like this. 
and there we go. So this should be a lot more long-term reliable, we'll call it, than the other iMac, which I have running uh, the other adapter with an SD card. It is completely silent. The only sound I'm hearing in the room I'm in is just the fan going off, but very happy with this. It is, whoop, very responsive, very silent, and it should make this thing last for many years to come. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.